Those of you who have been here longer than six months, stand up. Stand up. Okay. All right. All right. You know what this means, don't you? You you are all eligible to assist within ministry. Okay, because you have you have shown yourselves faithful, and well, here we are. So don't be surprised if one of the says, "Hey, you come here." All right. Um. Uh, but this is the thing, right? Yeshua sent them out two by two. He sent them out two by two, and then they gathered in more brothers and sisters. And as those brothers and sisters followed in the way of Messiah Yeshua, those brothers and sisters then began to start doing the same thing that the disciples did, amen? And they began to go out two by two themselves and began to reach out in, into the, to the Gentile nations, into the Jewish peoples, and to start bringing peoples into the way to the truth, to the life. But the message is not on that. That I just want to get an idea of, of, of numbers. And praise be to God, there are, some, there are strong numbers here with us. And as we see by the youth, there is life in this congregation. As we heard by the praise and worship, there is a spirit within this congregation. And we will continue to praise and honor God in all that we are and all that we do. Amen. Okay. The title of this morning's Torah portion is Bo. Bo in English translates into one of two words, go or come. Wait, how can I mean the same? Those two, and those are kind of like, but they're the same. Right? Because Hashem tells Moshe to come unto Pharaoh. But what does that mean, to come unto Pharaoh? Right? To go to him, but more, more, more significantly was to kind of make your influence upon him, right? The title of this morning's message is "See the Light in the Darkness." To see the light in the darkness, God can turn any mistake that you have made into a blessing. Any error that you have, any skeleton in your closet, he can turn that around into something good for his kingdom. Moses had ran away from Egypt, ran away from his heritage, if you will, being of royalty in the Pharaoh's house. He had ran away from it because of a mistake that he had made when he took somebody's life. And he ran way off into the wilderness. He ran and he, he, he stayed, he ran from in his fear, he ran in his shame, he ran in his, it, it just, he was just in bondage to what he had done. And God finds him there. Playing it off, living a different life, forgetting the mistakes of the past, living there as a shepherd. And God calls him out. God says, hey, take off your sandals. For where you're standing is holy ground. Hey, Take off your sandals. Hey, take off that shame. Take off that fear. Take off that insecurity. For you, I am going to make into holy ground. God is calling each and every one of you to be holy. Because He is holy. See, when we, we all have these plans. And we make these one, and God will give us a vision. He'll give you a ministry within yourself. He'll give you a calling. And then we begin to plan. And say, okay, God has called me. He's put this word within me. He's anointed me for this. He's blessed me for that. And, and God puts this thing in you. And then you start to make your plans. And there's the error. 
There is the drastic error, is that we start making plans on His Word. We start trying to make His Word conform to our plans. He didn't call you so He would conform to you. He's the King. He called you to conform to Him. That your life might be blessed. That you may be holy. That you would be a light in the darkness. That flame burning. One of the rabbis puts it this way. He says, some of the Israelis, they were so in that moment with Hashem. In that moment that the kavod Elohim, that the glory of God was the light that was shining, therefore they had no darkness. Let me, let me, let me go back. See, when we do things according to our plans, when we take His plan and do it our way, God is still there. He's there in whispers. He's there in whispers. You know, you're doing everything according to your way and your own understanding and your strength. And I know many of you here are very strong people. You know, y'all could pull tractor trailers and, and, you know, just all kinds of amazing stuff. And there you are, walking out God's calling in your plan. <laughs> and I say it, it doesn't make sense. But <laughs> there you are, walking out God's calling in your plan, right? And he's, he's steadily calling you in whispers, saying, come back, come back, come back. Stay in my word, stay in my word, stay in my word. Spend time in praise with me. Spend time in praise with me. And when we see this over and over again in, in, the, in the Bible. Paul reminds us that no good thing comes from your flesh. No good thing comes from your plan. No good thing. We can hear a hundred thousand voices, but no good thing will come until we start doing it according to Hashem's plan. We have to do it to His will. We have to call upon His strength. It's not by power or by might, but by... Come on, three of you guys knew that. There is no revival like the revival of somebody who has been called by God. And they've been called by God and they feel that moment with God and He has touched their lives and they're just on fire. But then there's, there's that gap, right? There's that moment. But they don't hear from God in a mighty way for a period. But it's, it's, it's quiet. Right? And he's, he's letting you step it out because you keep stepping it out according to your strength. You keep walking according to your understanding. You got the calling, he gave it to you, and you were like energized. You were like on fire. But then you started doing everything how you thought it should be because he called you. You start doing everything according to the book of, of, of Scott or Raphael or Nisa. This is how it goes in the book of, of Raphael. This is how it is. <laughs> and I'm not saying this to pick on anybody. Bless you. But we all do this. 
we all do this. Bless you. And so we're there doing and doing and doing and doing and doing according to our will. And we keep hitting roadblocks and keep hitting roadblocks and keep hitting roadblocks and keep, keep getting knocked down, keep getting knocked down, keep getting knocked down. And God's like, when are you going to do it with me? When are you going to take up what I have given you and do it in my fashion? That I might bless you, that I might strengthen you, that I might be your, your pillar of fire and your pillar of, of, of cloud. When are you going to do it according to my fashion? The beauty of God is that when we are impotent, He is omnipotent. Amen. When, when we can't, when we are at our lowest, when we are at our weakest, He is amazing. His strength is unsurpassed. His, his love knows no bounds. And He is the creator and the king of all. Hallelujah. And he brings the children of Israel back out of bondage. Taking the broken people. Bringing them out. Blessing them beyond what they were when they went in. A lot of you are going through Egypt times in your life. Where you're struggling. You might have something bound to you. You might be... You know, doing things according to your own understanding. And truly, when Moses did things according to his understanding, he failed. He failed. He thought by killing an Egyptian, he would bring about justice. That's not how you bring justice. When he called upon Hashem, then justice came. You and I cannot bring about justice unless we have Hashem with us in every step of the way. Amen. God took all the broken people for His purpose. For His purpose. For His purpose, He used idolaters like Ruth. For His purpose, He used street people like Rahab. For his purpose, he used murderers like Paul. For his purpose, he will use any and everyone. For his purpose. If he can use a boy from the south side, he can use you for anything in his kingdom. And let me say it like this. He will never close the door on his purpose. Amen. He will never change his mind. The gift that he gave you, the blessing that he placed upon you, he will not revoke it. He will not take it back. He says, hey, this is yours. And then just like a child, if you tend the child, if you take care of it, if you raise it, if you nourish it, it will grow. If you don't, no. It won't, right? This is your gift. This is your calling. God has placed it within you. Whether you choose to make it grow or not, where are you spending time? With Pharaoh? With something that you've been bound to for however many years you've been bound to it? You know, one of the purposes, one of the beauties of, of the plagues is that each one of them was a decimation of so many Egyptian gods. And at the end, the god, the Egyptian god Ra their God of life, right? And Hashem says, no. I'm even over this too. I am even over this too. 
You and I serve a mighty God, and there is nothing above Him. There is nothing above our God. But you and I have to stop closing those doors on our callings, on our giftings. I can't, you know, uh, I love Fiddler in the Roof, right? Fiddler in the Roof is a great movie. Steve had us, you know, that was a selection a while back for the, for the movie night. You're welcome. And, you know, it's amazing. Yeah, I, I love the quote in there by, by Tevye, right? He's always misquoting, always misquoting, always misquoting, saying so-and-so said, said, said this, they said that, and all throughout the movie. And the rabbi's son's always correcting him. No, 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 Moses said this. No, no, Moses said that too. No, no, Moses said that as well. <laughs> Finally, Tevye goes, you know, for somebody who didn't speak, he spoke a lot, I'm just saying. <laughs> So God can even take somebody who's afraid to talk and get them to speak. God can use anyone. Don't worry about if you're tattooed, if you have stuff, if you don't have stuff, whatever. Who cares? God chose you. God chose you. That is your qualifier. That is enough. The first five plagues were designed to cause about a, a hardness of Pharaoh's heart. They, they made it in, in, in the scriptures and sages say that it, it brought about so that he, he would become stubborn. But the ideal was that so when Pharaoh, if he chose to at any point, if he sought out teshuva, forgiveness, if he sought that out, if he sought out repentance, that it would be something from his heart, not just, you know, something just given, right? Like, okay, I'm sorry, take your people and go. But it had, God wanted it to be a sincere thing from Pharaoh. And it never was. It never was. It says, the sages write that, at the last of the plagues, he had already passed the point of seeking forgiveness. At this point, he had his mind made up what he was going to do. Do you ever get into a spot where, you know, you have your mind made up, that's it, that's it, that's it, I'm done, that's it. That's it. Surely not anybody in this congregation, right? Because you all are all gentle lambs. And the, 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 the love of Hashem rests and, and just oozes from all that you are, right? Truly no one here gets hard of heart, right? See, why do I bring Pharaoh into this humanist perspective? Because we have to. Because you and I can easily fall into a place of our heart becoming hardened. And then, then the love of God is not within us. When we have our stiff neck, God's love isn't there. We have to let that go. Tear down that veil, that, that hurt, that whatever it is. And let the love of God come forth through who you are. Because that's who he designed. He didn't say, oh, awesome Morash is going to teach multitudes, multitudes. But she's going to do it like Stalin. <laughs> you know? Learn the Hebrew now. It wouldn't work, would it? I mean, well, it might, but, uh, <laughs> but not to be a representative of the kingdom. It would not work. It would not be effective. She's allowed, like Yeshua, to call them into attention when <coughs> the disciples or the students go to the left. You know, when you, sons of Hasatan, focus. 
This is the way you're supposed to be, right? So we're allowed to call each other into focus. The sages say that there was a thickness over the entire land for three days. How long was Yeshua in the grave? Three days. How long was he in darkness for you? Well, y'all quiet now. Come on, let's try this again. How long was he in the grave for you? Three days. There you go. They say that the, the, the darkness was so thick that you could touch it. It was as, as thick as a, as a shekel. And so you could touch it. And it was. Um, Anissa has been to a, Israel several times, so she could tell you it's probably, I think, like a, maybe like a nickel. Okay? Shekel's like a nickel. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's solid like that. Right? Solid. The idea of the darkness is that we would seek the light. So that you and I would seek the light. At one time or another, every person has been a stranger to God. We didn't walk hand in hand with Him. Maybe we went on our own, started doing our thing under our understanding and our power. But now you're here. And the darkness is being lifted from your life. Amen. Some of you may say, but I have failed over and over and over and over and over again. How many, how many times did Moses have to go to Pharaoh before he gave in? At least, right? Listen. If you look at any of the patriarchs, the matriarchs, they failed and in big ways. In big ways. Paul was slaughtering early believers. And yet God called, knocked him off his high horse. I like that part of it. <laughs> Get down. You don't belong up there. You have no cause to look down upon anybody. And God has called each and every one of us for His service, for His glory. Amen. In Psalms 18 and 12, the Word of God says, God made the darkness as a screen. Dark clouds, dense clouds. Were a pavilion around God, and He sent those down upon Egypt. Can you imagine being in the center of, of, of a, a big thunderstorm cloud, just, just see nothing? Right? It's cold and damp. I bring this up because. There's a parallel to people that you feel are your enemies. Things that you feel are your enemies. Having enemies is dangerous because it consumes your energy and your attention. And quite often people become hypnotized by focusing on somebody that they don't like that it takes all their attention away from what they're supposed to be doing. It takes all their energy. It saps their strength because they'd rather be mad. God never called you to be mad, did he? How about it? Brother Abraham, did God call you to be mad? Sir. How about you, Sister Anastasia? Did God call you to be mad? I don't think you could. I mean, you smile all the time. Huh? Did I read you? 
Oh, you radiate happiness. Okay, that's, that's good. So please, brothers and sisters, don't take up enemies. Don't do that. Don't, don't at all. Because when you have that, your, your independence is gone. You are now, you're, you're now chained to them forever. You're codependent upon that person. And whether that person treats you well or not, depends on how you're going to have a day, a good day or a bad day, right? There's, there's only one who should have that power over your life. Amen. And he died for your salvation. In Luke 22 and 24, a dispute arose among them as to which of them was, re was to be regarded as the greatest. Uh, which one's a better cant? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> there you go. Which one was to be the greatest? And he said to them, The kings of the Gentile exercise lordship over them. And those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you, rather. Let the greatest among you become the young, as the youngest, and the leader as the one who serves. The greatest among you will be willing to serve the host. This is the truth of our God. You want to be risen up? Serve. He will rise you up. There's many people I can attest to this happening for them.